How are parents supposed to explain to their children what's going on in our country right now? I mean, how are they supposed to explain to their children what's, what's going on? I mean, I, I mean, are they supposed to say to them, wherever there are people, poop happens? And, and I don't want you to get on my case and start writing comments on the Facebook right now that I shouldn't use the word poop while I'm preaching. I know that's a PG word. I was at a friend's house, and the father says to his daughter, well, it's time for you to get ready for bed. And she, of course, doesn't want to go to bed. And finally, he says, look, I'll read you a story before you go to bed. OK. And then he says, and what book would you like me to read you? And her response, all loud and out there for even the priest to hear, I want you to read me Everyone Poops. Yes, it is a children's book. And it is what? parents teach their children. Because the reality is the parents have a big responsibility in raising their children. It's what I explain to parents whenever I do a baptism. Like I explained to the family of Margaret, whose baptism I did recently. You have a big responsibility in raising your children, especially nowadays, with what your children are going to be exposed to, and you're not going to have much control over it. What they're being exposed to, where they're getting confronted with, you're not going to have as much control over it as you would like. And so I say to the parents how wonderful it is that you have chosen to have your child baptized. But that's only the beginning of the journey. Because baptism takes away the sin. But what keeps the sin away? There's a beautiful part of the baptismal celebration where a white garment is put on the baby or the baby's already wearing a beautiful white garment, sometimes a family heirloom, like in the case of Margaret. And how do I know it was a family heirloom? They had to steam it before the baptismal celebration because it was some type of linen that goes back centuries or something. I don't know, but it was beautiful. But we highlight that. You say, see in this white garment the child's outward dignity. Keep this garment unstained. You see, baptism takes away sin. But what keeps them from sinning? And I read at all the baptismal celebrations, the private baptisms, this beautiful command of Jesus. This is his great commissioning. This is how he ended the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Go then to all peoples everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teach them to obey everything I have commanded you, and I will be with you always to the end of the age. Oh, we get the Trinitarian formula part. We baptize with water, we say the prayer. But did you notice that Jesus continues, teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. That's what's going to keep the child from sin. Baptism takes away sin. It's the teaching that comes from the family that will help keep the child from sin. So what are we teaching our children right now about what's happening in this country right now? How are we explaining it to them? What are we teaching them? Well, I know what some children are learning. When the poop hits the fan, hoard toilet paper. 
Hey, that's the lesson being taught to a lot of children right now. We're going to go buy it all up, and we don't care if others don't have enough toilet paper. We're going to have enough toilet paper. Is that what we want our children to learn? Is that the lesson that we're teaching them? Yeah, we need it. But so do others. And so Jesus gave us other commands. You know, some of them had to do kind of with maybe love, you know, like loving God, loving self, loving neighbor. But what I like about Jesus, a lot of his commands weren't spoken. He taught us by his own actions. Think about it. Why did Jesus go get baptized by John in the Jordan? Did he have any sins that needed to be washed away? And yet that's what happened in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 10 through 11. Coming up out of the water, Jesus saw the heavens being torn open and the spirit like a dove descending upon him. And a voice came from the heavens, you are my beloved son, with you I am well pleased. That's the command, that when we're baptized, God confirms us to be his adopted children. Through baptism, we become members of the family of God. Through baptism, we become brothers and sisters who could be there for each other, to help each other to remain free from sin, but to help each other to deal with the poop of this world. I mean, look at this other baptism I did of Coraline. How can we help the family of Coraline raise her in this world now? Through our prayers. Let us join together and pray for all parents right now. Help them as they're raising their children now. Let us act like their brothers and sisters, their family, and be there for them in the time of need. So yes, baptism takes away sin, but it keeps sin away by uniting us to God's family as God's adopted children and giving us so much more. Listen to what St. Peter had to say in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 10, verse 37 and 38. After the baptism that John preached, God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We learn through Jesus Christ and the preaching of John the Baptist that in baptism we receive the great gift of the Holy Spirit. It's that presence and action of the Holy Spirit in our lives that will help us to survive our lives, to get through our lives. And it also gives us the power, the power to resist and to overcome sin, to bring good into this world with our Lord Jesus, to bring healing into this world with our Lord Jesus. And that's what we need, healing. Did you notice during our penitential rite at the beginning of Mass what we prayed for today? Lord, heal our land. Heal our land. We celebrate today the great baptism of the Lord and we learn that through that baptism the Lord desires to take away the sin of the world to help us deal with our poop. Gifting us that great Holy Spirit by giving us power but most especially by giving us each other as brothers and sisters, the adopted children of God's family.